Howdy folks. Sorry I tried to find you a good view for this video, but was just getting too tired and thirsty, so I saw this big rock and this big log behind me and decided this would have to do. So today we're going to prove something that we've been using all our lives, a very familiar result, which is the cancellation law, which tells us this. It's a result about groups. If we have three elements, A, B, and C, from a group G, and we know that AB equals AC, or we know that BA equals CA, we can cancel the A's on the left, or cancel the A's on the right, to conclude that B is equal to C. And this is something you've used a lot. Of course, if I tell you that 2x equals 2y, you would probably not hesitate to cancel out the 2's and conclude that x is equal to y. My finger doesn't make a very good eraser, but you see what I mean. You would be perfectly content to do that. The thing is, when we're studying abstract algebra, a lot of times we are considering arbitrary operations on arbitrary sets. So we don't necessarily know that everything works exactly the way that we would like it to. So let's go ahead and prove this so that we can use the cancellation law going forward for group elements. That if we've got the same element being composed on the left, we can cancel it. Or if we've got the same element being composed on the right, on both sides of an equation, we can cancel it. Now, I'm going to say times to indicate this operation. I'm going to talk about it as if it is multiplication. Just remember, it's an arbitrary operation, but the words we use to describe multiplication are nice words, so I'm going to keep using them. First, let's prove this one. That AB equals AC implies that B equals C. It's super straightforward. Since this is a group, we know that A has an inverse element. So we can multiply both sides of the equation by A inverse on the left. If we do that, we get that A inverse times AB is equal to A inverse times AC. Now we can use the perhaps underappreciated group property of associativity to associate the A inverses with the A's. That way we can combine those before we worry about anything else. By definition of inverse elements, of course, this is going to be the identity, which we'll call E, and this will be the identity, which we'll call E. Thus, we have the EB equals EC, and then by definition of identity element, we conclude that B is equal to C. So indeed, we can cancel elements on the left. Now let's prove this one. Of course, it's basically the same exact proof that if we've got BA equals CA, we can conclude B equals C. We're gonna do the same magic trick. We'll just multiply on the right by A inverse. Man, it sounds like I chose to film next to a war zone or something, but I promise you I didn't. <laughs> At least I hope I didn't. So again, we know we got inverse elements, so we'll multiply both sides of the equation on the right by A inverse. That's this equation here. Now, if we do that, we get that B A A inverse equals C A A inverse, C A A inverse. Again, we can use associativity to associate A with A inverse. Those will produce the identity elements, and so we have that B times E, the identity, is equal to C times E, the identity. And then by definition of identity, we again have that B is equal to C. So now we know we can use the cancellation law for groups. If we have the same group element composed on the same side, on both sides of an equation, either on the left or on the right, we can cancel it out. One thing that you should notice is something that we didn't prove here. What didn't we prove? Uh, we didn't prove that if A times B equals C times A, that we could then conclude that B equals C. A has to be on the same side on both sides of the equation. Either it has to be on the left on both sides, or it has to be on the right on both sides. So here we cannot conclude that B equals C. Do you see why that is? The issue is commutativity. So consider a non-commutative operation, like subtraction. We could write that 5 minus 2 is equal to 8 minus 5. So here, we're combining 5 with 2 under subtraction and 8 with 5 under subtraction. You see we've got the 5 on the left here, 5 on the right there. This is a true equation, 3 equals 3, but we can't cancel out the 2 and the 8 
and then, or no, excuse me, we can't cancel out the fives and then conclude that two is equal to eight because of course it isn't. Now, if we knew that the operation we were working with was commutative, we could change C times A into A times C. And then we'd have A on the same side, on both sides of the equation, and we could use the cancellation law that we just proved. So that's how you prove the cancellation law for group elements. I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching. So I found myself in tears Every day was filled